um, I'm here to talk about um, Avail, um, which includes a data availability uh, solution. Um, so um, uh, Avail's mission is to, acc <clears throat> to accelerate the unification of Web3, and I'll get into kind of how we're uh, looking at that, and a big part of that is, um, is uh, data availability. Um, and uh, we'll talk about uh, long-term storage needs uh, for, for the Avail network. <clears throat> so taking a step back and thinking about like how, uh, how we got here, how we got to this uh, DA being this big narrative, um, um, Ethereum did a big pivot to rollups um, around 2020. And um, it was pretty clear at the time to the Avail team, like the team that became the Avail team, um, that uh, that rollups would need um, some specialized uh, infrastructure to be able to work efficiently. Um, so uh, rollups take computation off chain, um, so they allow the execution outside of the chain, um, but they commit the transaction data or state diffs to the L1 um, so that other people can verify that the rollup is executing correctly. Um, and then that means that um, although you're able to scale execution, you're not able to actually scale um, your rollup effectively because you're limited by the, you're still limited by the block size of Ethereum. Um, and, and so the, the first thing that we wanted to solve was this problem of how do we create more block space, basically. And that is what DA solutions are aiming to do. So um, at the core, they're essentially um, specialized chains, specialized L1s um, designed to be expandable, to have expandable block space um, and to not impose requirements on the different participants of the system um, about um, uh, the, uh, about the block size. Like it, when the block size increases, you don't want uh, the other participants of the system to um, be faced with increased costs. Um, so that was our first um, first product. Um, it is actually, um, I'll talk a bit more about it later, but um, I just want to touch on like the rest of our roadmap um, is that um, because um, because of this roll-up centric universe, we um, we are seeing a lot of fragmentation of liquidity and user experience and developer experience um, that inherently comes with this. And so the team actually saw this, you know, from the start, and we've actually been working on um, a set of solutions for that. And so uh, just this week, we are announcing the Avail Nexus, uh, which is a proof aggregation layer, that, layer that's built on top of the RDA layer, um, as well as a, a security, of the Avail Fusion Security, which is a, um, a way to um, provide additional economic security at that base layer, at the DA layer. Um, so I'll, I'll talk briefly about kind of what those are, and then we'll dive into um, how Avail DA works and and how it's relevant for for Filecoin. Um, so um, yeah, so briefly, Avail DA um, so it's a, a validity proof based uh, solution. Um, it um, it uh, uses KZG polynomial commitments, uh, which um, allow a light client, so that, that is a client that doesn't receive entire blocks. It allows a light client to sample the inside of a block, and with a few samples, it's able to determine that the block, you know, to a high degree of probability, it's been published correctly. That's the data availability sampling piece. Um, and because we use the KCG polynomial, polynomial commitments um, together with erasure coding, uh, you don't need um, you don't need fraud proofs in the system, uh, which is a big win. Um, and we chose that 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 was a very deliberate design decision because it enables things like the nexus. So even though we just announced it, we've actually been working on it for a long time. Um, our DA layer is about to go into mainnet. Um, we've been running test nets for a while. We are um, just wrapping up um, um, an incentivized test net program, and um, yeah, we're looking for, like next couple months to have to have a mainnet launch. The Nexus is built on top of, of this DA layer. Um, and you can think about it as a sovereign rollup on top of the of LDA. So a sovereign rollup is a rollup that um, settles itself. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a proof aggregation layer. Plus, it's able to verify that the data for the chains that it's aggregating um, is on the DA layer. So it leverages our light clients <clears throat> to be able to verify the, the data in general for all of these rollups. Um, is in the DA layer, and that enables um, any rollup in the system 
to be confident about the state of any other rollup in the system without having to actually run a full node of the other rollup, which obviously wouldn't scale if you think about this new world that we're entering into where we're going to have hundreds and thousands of rollups. Um, if you want rollups to be able to talk to each other, um, you can't have them running you know, full nodes of every, of every, uh, every other rollup. So they want to be able to guarantee that they understand that the execution was performed correctly and that the execution that, they're, that, that they verified is actually on the chain. And so that's why um, the Nexus plus the DA layer really makes a lot of sense. Um, we're going to be launching this this year. And then in order to power all of this, our DA layer needs to be very secure. And so for that, we're launching a Veil Fusion, which is a way to bring um, high value tokens like BTC and ETH to Avail um, and actually use them as part of the Avail consensus um, uh, protocol. Um, so that's a fairly new thing that I, I think it hasn't really been done before. Um, and so we're very excited um, to, be, to be doing this. Um, that's targeted for next year. So that's like in a nutshell what, what we're doing. Um, we're basically trying to accelerate the unification of Web3 by enabling modular execution layers. So these are rollups on top of Avail um, to scale and interoperate in a secure and trust minimized way. So trust minimized is very important for us. We are not looking to create like trusted middlemen or you know to add trust assumptions. Um, so that's like our high level uh, mission. So a little bit more about Avail DA. Um, as I said before, it's a modular base layer. So if you think about, like there was a question earlier about um, like all blockchains um, do data availability, like that is correct, all L1s do DA. Um, the traditional way that a blockchain does DA is it publishes the entire block and everybody consumes the entire block. You know that it is available because it was published in its entirety and you consumed it, you downloaded the whole thing. Um, the The thing is in a, in a roll-up world, um, it, it doesn't really make sense. Like you don't want to be consuming the entire block that contains every rollup, you know, in existence, um, because like you're just one rollup. You only care about your piece of the pie, but you do care that the block was published in its entirety, that the block is correct. Um, and so, even though you don't want don't want to download all the data, you actually do want to know that the block was published correctly. And so, um, that is in essence that is what DA is trying to do. So it's trying to provide. Um, a way to have increasing block space and make it so that the, the different participants, so the validators in the system that are packaging up and publishing the data, um, they are not interpreting the data. So for them, it's relatively cheap to package and you know, publish more data. Um, and the consumers, like the rollups and the end user clients, they're able to use light clients so, so that they don't have to download the entire blocks, but they can verify that the blocks were published correctly with you know relatively small amount of networking. Um, Aveldi actually has a pretty robust validator set. So you're, you're right about the, uh, um, the uh, 100 um, number for, for Cosmos chains in general, but uh, Avail is based on um, uh, Substrate, which is the Polkadot SDK, um, and um, it has uh, support for 1,000 validators. And we can even see beyond that by switching the the signature scheme that we use. Um, at some point, we'll, we'll switch to BLS, uh, probably, which will enable even more validators. Um, and and yeah, just to reiterate, like the way that the modular uh, um, framework uh, works is that the, the base layer is not interpreting the transactions. So it's literally just raw data. But it's raw data that is held in the chain for long enough for settlement to happen. And beyond that, you, you don't really need um, the DA to be holding onto the data. Um, yeah, I already talked about KCG commitments, so I'll skip this. Um, so if you deep dive to like how we're publishing data, um, there's um, the original data that uh, that gets you know published to avail via these like transactions that just have a block of data. Um, it gets added up um, and put into a matrix and then it gets extended via erasure coding, uh, which is just standard erasure coding. Um, and then um, commitments are generated for um, the entire block, the together, the original and, and extended. And those commitments go in the header. And so then um, those blocks get published by the network um, and end up in the avail chain uh, as a regular blockchain. So with the key difference that like the data that's actually contained 
um, is the the network is not checking validity of any way in any way. Um, the the blobs of data inside inside these blocks, inside each block. Um, uh, so as I said, it's a matrix, and their header actually contains an application ID. Um, there's a there's an index that says, you know, application three goes from, you know, cell one through cell twenty, and application twenty goes through, you know, whatever it is. Like basically, you're able as a as a consumer of the block, you're able to know just from the header where in the block the application for the data for your application might be and so you're able to download just what you need e even if you need a full node of your application you can download just what you need um and then yeah more more if you care to know more details about how we generate uh kcg commitments like let me know i can uh, deep dive on that um but um yeah basically we use our, our matrix um we lay our data out in the matrix this is the original data it gets extended um commitments are generated row wise and then uh, KCG commitments have this nice property that um, um, you can you can extend uh, using the same erasure coding. You can extend the commitments, and you basically get commitments for the whole block. Um, so these are the commitments that go in the header. Um, Avail uses um, a hybrid ledger, um, Babe and Grandpa. So this is a Polkadot um, a substrate SDK a substrate feature um, that we are very happy with. Um, so Babe is a block production algorithm and Grandpa is the finality algorithm. Um, and this hybrid ledger gives us a mix of um, um, liveness and, and quick finality. So it's not instant finality, uh, but it's relatively quick. Um, and, um, and it means that even if there's a network partition or something like that, our network can continue to produce blocks um, because of this uh, hybrid ledger. Um, and the network is a nominated proof of stake network. So um, validators stake to become validators, um, and it's possible for anybody with the avail token to basically uh, nominate another validator and get rewards for for that. Um, up to a thousand validators in the active set, as I said before. So then we also have this like client network. So our so our validators. So so far I talked about the validators. They're they're producing blocks. We also have a like client network that has a P2P like a Kademlian network of its own. Um, and they receive, so as like clients, they receive only the headers of the blocks as they are produced, as they are finalized. Um, and then they start to sample. And when they sample, they first check whether the DHT has the data that they're looking for. So they are looking for, you know, a proof and the data for a particular cell in the matrix. Um, and if it's not found in the DHT, they go get it from, uh, an RPC endpoint from the 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 validator network um and then and then they put it into the dhd and so the idea is that within one block time as i was talking earlier about the 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 timing that it you know it takes to produce the block and verify it and so on part for us part of that time is spent populating the dhd basically um and we basically want to get to you know as much of each block i think at this point we have replicated each block in the like client DHT within the block time, uh, which is pretty great. Um, the, that replication basically creates what we call high data availability, which means that during the time when enough pieces of a block are available within the DHT, which is not forever, of course, because they, uh, they're all putting new stuff into the DHT all, in you know, every block. Um, so during the time when it's uh, at least more than half the block is available in the DHT, a block would be uh, recoverable even if the validator network goes offline or even if you're like suffering some kind of attack um, that partitions it. Um, so it creates this like virtual replica within the DHT of the like client network. Um, yes. Who are you? Where? We are. Well, well, what does that mean? Like it is between the like clients. We, ru we run boot nodes. It's not part of IPFS. It's not part of, yeah. Is not so. We actually looked at using um, we looked at using IPFS, uh, but um, the CIDs really don't work for this use case uh, because the amount of data in each cell is very small, and um, it really makes sense to address the data a block number cell number um, because that's how it's 
published. So you, you, you're really trying to, like each light client is trying to randomly sample data from the chain and, and wants to know like, okay, like for height 3000, cell number 400, I want to know, like, give me the proof for that. Like, let me check whether it's correct with respect to the header that I have. Um, and so you don't actually have a hash of that because the hash would be about as big as the data itself. Um, so yeah, so we uh, ba built our own uh, DHC network, um, but it's still using lib P2P um, Kademli underneath. Um, yeah, this gives uh, more detail on basically what I just said. Um, P2P network, um, we provide nodes for bootstrapping. We're also currently um, have some, what we call fat clients. These are nodes that are modified like clients that sit right next to a full that are programmed to basically blast a bunch of data into the DHT at the very beginning, like as soon as it's, uh, as a block is created um, to make it more likely that light nodes will find the data in the DHT and not have to hit our RPC. Um, we're looking to get rid of that at some point. Um, and yeah, so the idea is that, you know, as, as more, more light clients come, come online, like we can basically support more and more, um, of them. Um, same with as more, as the blocks get bigger, like we want the whole thing to scale. Um, we have done a bunch of testing. Um, I can get into some of the performance. Um, yeah. What's the attention? Yeah. It's a big question. Yeah. Great question. Uh, so retention, we don't know is the short answer. Um, we are uh, about to do a study um, to try to figure out what uh, what it is. Um, we believe it is in, uh, in the at least hours uh, for now. Um, and our goal is to have it be in the days range. Um, so um, yeah, like at least a day I think would be very useful uh, for, for DAS. Um, beyond that, it's not it is not as useful because you know people are not looking at historical data as as much, um, or like it's once it's settled, it's not as important for it to be in the DHT as well as in the um, uh, the RPC network. Yes, we saw them, but um, I think there's this. Can I can I do what? Ooh, British state. Uh, all all light clients. It is it is completely open. Does that answer or true spirit? What if I just like simple part? What does that mean? Like, um, just create a ton of big bills, but then you have one to build. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, um, I mean, the, the light nodes are verifying the data that they're getting. So if you're putting up fake data, um, they will be able to tell that your data is fake. And so, oh. That's fine on the CFT system and they're keeping the data a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to come down and mm -hmm. stop someone saying, you know what, I really hate a bit. I'm conflicted. Think they made me. Mm -hmm. They accept everything. It's perfect. But then, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should talk after. Uh, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I realize I'm not like, not a P2P expert, so yeah, like maybe I need to look into that. Um, um, oh, this keeps moving up. Okay. Um, cool. Performance-wise, uh, well, we focus a lot on the the time that it takes to create the KCG commitments, uh, which is a particularly expensive part of the process for us. Um, and this is just demonstrating that we can actually create them, um, you know, well within the block time. Um, even for blocks as big as 128 megabytes. Um, our current block size is two megabytes. Well, rather it's two megabytes erasure coded to four megabytes uh, every 20 seconds. Um, and so this timing would be, you know, pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, it, this doesn't include the time for propagation and, you know, putting chunks into the DC and, and all that. But uh, the, uh, my latest info on that is that we're able to uh, fully put everything from a block as it is produced into the DHT well within the block time as well. Um, um, but there's there's a ton of stuff that we're still tweaking. So we're you know actively trying to tweak the um, our lib P2P um, variables to make it more efficient um, and balance that with like amount of memory that we're consuming because um, it can be pretty memory hungry um, to 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 do. 
Um, yeah, in the future, we have a bunch of low-level optimizations that we want to do. Um, there are things like KCG multiproofs, um, which is the ability to um, get a proof for a region of a block. So it, remember, it's like we lay it out as a matrix, and currently, um, currently we're sampling individual cells, but it's also possible to get a um, to get a region, like get a proof for a region of a block, which can be useful in cases where applications are storing a bunch of data in the block, and you might want to um, just verify all of your data in one in one go, um, and it will allow for for bigger blocks as well. Um, we have a um, ZK data attestation bridge. This is actually not really future. We already have uh, the bridge, but um, um, some there are some improvements to it. So we we have a bridge that basically creates ZK proofs of avails consensus, and we are able to verify that on Ethereum, so that on Ethereum you can verify that avail has some particular data with a very high degree of of confidence. Um, and so that's what uh, chains that are becoming what are called validiums. Um, which is essentially a rollup that then puts data off chain. Um, they use this bridge in order to verify that their data is correctly off chain. Um, so yeah, summary: uh, blockchains are are really going modular. Like this is a well established trend. Um, it really is like there are dozens, uh, maybe hundreds of rollups right now, and we think this is the total tip of the iceberg. Like the entire um, Web three. Uh, world for the most part is going to roll up. There are even roll ups on, on Bitcoin uh, being created. Um, and um, they really benefit from DA layers because they are designed uh, for roll ups specifically. Um, they basically minimize the work that the base layer is doing and focus it just on providing scalable block space. Um, and um, yeah, we're doing um, more stuff, you know, higher up in the stack. Uh, we are um yeah well, sorry just reading what the slide says like we yeah we do have like DAS and we uh have all of these benefits um but we also are are working higher up the stack and and doing um um this unification framework called the nexus um for for interop between um blockchains yeah i think that's um most of what i had i'm happy to take questions if you guys Wait, where do you see fashion version? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, I have more. Hey, I was like, yeah, this is the end of my usual presentation. Um, so, so anyway, uh, DA versus storage. Um, um, so DA is about assurance that the data is in the most recent blocks um, that is being made available, right? That is being published correctly um, so that blocks can be verified versus looking up historical data of old blocks that are already like settled history. Um, so you can think of like DA as like a newspaper factory, but not a warehouse of newspapers. So we like publish the new newspapers, they arrive, you know, you can see it on the sidewalk. <laughs> You're like, the newspaper, new newspaper is there. I see that it has data, <laughs> um, but it's not a storage for newspapers. It's not microfiche. Um, and so, uh, but there is utility to the storage, right? Like storage is really useful for syncing nodes, um, for data analysis, for other specialized stuff. I'm explicitly not saying application storage, which I think like I, I, um, was mentioned in the last talk about like how people are using that. It's really not meant to be like application, general purpose application storage, like you're not meant to store, but sometimes it's true that applications do put just random data of their app into uh, the transactions because it's just the easiest way to get it into the chain. Um, but um, but I, I think that there will be some separation between those those concerns. Um, so yeah, storage is still super useful. And so when I think of how like the first layer of integration is just archiving the historical data in Avail. Currently, all our uh, nodes are archive nodes. They're all storing all of the um, all of the history of transactions, and will it'll probably be the case for maybe the first year. Um, because at two megabytes every 20 seconds, it's not that much data. So it's okay for probably the first uh, year of operation. But then as soon as you start scaling up those, uh, those block sizes, it just starts adding up really quick. And so we're definitely going to start pruning um, at some point. Um, and when the network starts pruning, you know, all data is going to disappear from, from the avail network uh, proper. And so um, 
the thing is, this is um, there's a lot of prior art here. Like Ethereum has their people publish uh, historical blocks um, for the purpose of analysis and syncing nodes. People pay for it. Uh, you can pay. I don't know, in fewer alchemy, like these uh, companies, like you can just pay for access to an, an RPC uh, node that actually has full history. Um, and so this is a thing. Um, it doesn't have to be provided as a node, like using the same interface. Um, it could be provided out of band. Um, so I, as a, like at, as a, at a minimum, um, we would want uh, some system that observes the network for finalized blocks and then archives the block data for those blocks and provides some level of guarantees of continued storage but we're you know pretty open-ended for what that might be um and and then of course provides a method for retrieving the archive data um so that could be um you know a programmatic retrieval built into the node so that the node like can be just synced with some service that provides historical archives um or it could be something else um i think nice is integrated but of course uh, other things work and then, yeah, like I think there's a bunch of nice to haves like web-based status page or providing a method for checking um, if data is retrievable, things, things like that. Um, so yeah, a few more technical notes. Um, Avail is based on Substrate, which is the Polkadot SDK. Um, so a lot of the Polkadot tooling just works, but not all of it because we do have some tweaks. We have these modified headers. We have some new types. Um, we do provide an Avail.js uh, library that wraps the Polkadot.js library. Um, it makes it super easy, uh, at least from a TypeScript JS um, environment to, to use. But there, there are, are, are other interfaces for other languages um, that are possible to to use. And we have we have docs um, with you know instructions for running nodes and, and things like that. Um, plus, of course, we're more than happy to to chat with people um, if there are any questions. Yes. I have a question on the previous slide uh, on offloading data, historical data to Cloudpoint. Uh, I actually have two questions here. Uh, first one is how do, how would you imagine a, a, a bail network compensating the Filecoin network for the storage service it's going to be it, it would provide? Uh, would it be like some form of like do you, do you have a, sorry I missed the the initial part of the talk so maybe like would like to understand more about like you have a crypto economy and like how would you imagine compensating the the Filecoin network for those services? And second, you mentioned about retrievability guarantees and retrievability flows. Uh, is there yeah. anything in the <clears throat> avail stack, stack itself that would functionally require uh, going back at one point and checking something in history, or, or is this more kind of like oriented towards indexers, uh, explorers, and other uh, other okay. participants that are not specifically the avail protocol? Yeah, good good questions. Um, so I'll take the latter first. Um, I, I don't think that there's any structural reason for avail like direct avail blockchain participants like validators to <clears throat> look at historical nodes beyond a certain point um of course it is a you know they are voting on the validity of upcoming blocks and um so they have to be following the chain and so on so recent history is very important um but old history you know from six months ago or whatever i, I think it's not really important you can you can warp sync a node um to you know the re recent history and then follow the chain from there, um, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, so I think that um, yeah, there's no built-in reason that the core chain needs it. Um, and I think so. This bleeds into the first question. Like there is also I think no. So Avail has a token. It is an L1. Um, mm. But the incentive structure um, is for validation um for you know correct validation uh which as i it follows from the last point that it d doesn't really incentivize storage per se um like historical data storage um so what um the the twist though is that it is important to the network as a whole and so i do think that the avail project is interested in making sure that it happens we don't know exactly the shape of how that will happen whether it's something that you know our foundation needs to take up or or there's some other method, it is also important to the rollups um, on the stack because some of them might have applications where they want to be able to guarantee that the history lasts for longer. They're not 
participate, like they're not running validators, right? They're just paying for transaction, posting transaction data on a veil. Um, but there is perhaps some way for us to kind of include them in the conversation. Yeah. Or like where services could be provided in a way where um, individual users of Avail, that is like in, like individual apps, might be incentivized then on their own to pay for services. It's a bit similar to what you said about like the indexers, right? Where individual apps that use Ethereum or whatever are sometimes incentivized to go pay for uh, an indexer service or historical RPC. Yeah, so maybe just wanted to touch on to to the points. Uh, does the um, avail ecosystem or the pork product or ecosystem have that? I assume like avail is mostly servicing, but I'm not sure if that is that is the case. Is there uh, something like the graph, for example, which you know by function and kind of like by um, purpose, it actually needs to go back in time and, and re index? We don't things? have anything like the graph. Um, right now because the um the network is agnostic as to what the data means so there isn't a ton of utility in indexing avail at the avail layer um i don't know how this will evolve uh, because of course it's you know possible to understand like it's possible to build a service that understands the roll-up uh data that is being posted to avail and to build either an indexer for an individual rollup or for maybe maybe many rollups at the same time. So there might be utility in that. Somebody might build that, but that's not something that um is not something that we have right now. Um and we probably don't need it for the foreseeable future is my take. I think we'll need indexers at like one level up. Like each rollup on top of avail will need to have its own indexing solution. Well actually I sorry, just to, like my hot take is I hate indexers. So I, I I hope that they won't need them in the future, but for the you know given the current stacks I like that are out there, I think that they will probably need indexers. Yes, I just wanted to <laughs> make my stance against indexers clear. <laughs> yes. Can you bring things up on? Just like so, there's like the availability the after the 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 upper data bill. Yeah. Brought through their system. Busted. Yep. 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 Depends on every application. Every rollup kind of has its own scheme. Yes. I guess like to to move this and buy into at some point in the service, some portion of that. Sections put that. Yeah. 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 I mean, it is possible to retrieve data from a veil. Isn't you don't use data availability sampling for that. Like you would just request you know wholesale blocks. Or, or maybe you could use something like IPFS or something for that if that existed. So it could be, yeah, it, it really doesn't make sense to use DAS as a way to retrieve data. Like that's, there is not for that, right? Like you only do a few samples and like you're kind of supposed to stop at that. Um, it, it would be huge overhead to try to get a full block by doing sampling on every cell. <laughs> so that's not what it's for. Uh, but separately, I mean, it is a regular blockchain. Um, like we just ripped out smart contract support and a bunch of stuff and we added in the KCG thing, but like a lot of the base is the same. Like it is a blockchain, it's publishing blocks. Uh, you're able to either save the blocks in, you know, a system like IPFS or you're able to query a node for blocks. So within the time of the, you know, that the blockchain has a history, um, you can just use the RPC to request block data, um, which is how I imagine a, a fraud proof system might be implemented. In the case of um, ZK uh, chains, they, ah, it's complicated. We can take it offline, but yeah, um, they might also need uh, data uh, as well, um, but uh, but validity proofs at least um, help. Anyway, yeah, we'll take it offline. <laughs> Unless, like, yeah, people want to hear this back and forth. <laughs> um, any other uh, questions about Avail or how it might integrate with IPFS uh, or... Yeah, anything else? There's um, links here if you want to learn more about um, about Avail. Thanks. Thank you, thank you.